I think I'm recording. All right, what are we looking at, guys, right now? Assignment. Oh, chapter now. Okay, it takes, it takes a, there's a little lag there. So I'm gonna click on that. Am I off the assignment or I'm still on the uh, You're on assignment? The I am on the assignment? Yes. Oh, this is, that's a pain. Okay. All right. I'm going to hold off right there and I should have the chart in front of us, correct? Yeah. yeah. All right. So this chart, which is on the chapter 25 reading that I gave you guys, the PDF, this is where you're going to get the sizes of the beams that we're using or the structural members, because these same members can also be used for columns, by the way. So the W18 by 60, which is in the first assignment, um, the W represents the shape of the beam. You have S shapes, you have C shapes, you have I shapes, you have a number of different um, structural steel members that when extruded have a certain size uh, and shape to them. So the W represents that shape. And from some of the earlier assignments and readings and presentations, you know, from the steel construction manuals and so on, um, that there's all sorts of information available to give you what the dimensions are of all the different parts of the beams and the things that are used for calculations. So you have W18 by 60. The 18 represents the depth of the beam. And I said it's a rounded out, uh, rounded up number. Um, to 18, just a nice whole number that can be used. But in actuality, if you look at the same chart, the depth of the beam is 18 and one quarter inches. All righty, everyone got that? And what is the first cell that we're supposed to fill in for this member? It's going to be, um, I can't look at both things at once, guys, so you have to help me out through this. It's going to be A in the worksheet what do they ask for the depth yeah All right and that answer then is going to be 18 and a quarter so uh, lorenzo did you get that correct yep okay so that's the, at least the information you're going to be getting for um for the cell to fill out what the depth of the beam is on that and you notice on the right hand side we also have some metric designations for the same beams um, onto there you guys see that on the right hand side? Yeah. All right, so you should be able to fill out most of them. Now, what is the second cell that we need to fill out? Uh, width B. Is the width of the beam? Yeah. Okay, so what did you put in for that? Seven and a half inch. Okay, straight from the charts. That's how simple it is, okay? All right, now there's some additional information that I don't think we asked for, correct? On this, you get the thickness of the, of the webs and of the flanges um, there. You get W represents the thickness of the flange. Now that's important when you're doing your detailing, obviously, um, because what you're gonna do is give a dimension from the center line up to, to where some of that detailing is gonna be, but you guys are just copying it over. But please try to understand where some of those values are gotten from. And it's from these standard charts, which are provided. And they're provided in the steel manuals. In this case, I provided it um, in the uh, chapter 25 chapter. Um, okay, and then the K value is something that's used for um, being able to connect uh, angles to it and so that you know exactly how much of a cut you need to make on those top. That K value is from the top to where the curves on the beams or columns on the structural members stop. So you notice both the top of that W shape and the bottom have a curve where the flange meets the webs. And that is included as part of the K value. Um, now, what was kind of unique about this, and I mentioned it also previously, is that that curve, you do not have to draw on your uh, structural detailing. Um, that is one of the things that you don't have to, to do either at the end of the flanges or um, 
at a connection between the flange and the web. You can just keep that as a straight line. And I think most of you did that on your drawings, correct? You can nod yes, but I won't see you. If you have to answer, you have to answer. Lorenzo, did you do that when you drew it? Um, pretty sure. Okay. Gabrielle, how far did you get with your drawings? I changed them. Okay. All right. Um, you guys were coordinating, right? Um, actually, who did get pretty far was Lorenzo and um, also Johanna got through all of the um, problems with the exception of what we're going over right now. All right, let's continue and let's see if we can go down to the next chart right in here. And this is where it becomes a little bit maybe more difficult. All right. What are the next two cells that they're asking us to fill out on this first beam? Lorenzo? C? Well, I don't know. I can't see what C is. Oh. They, they ask for an over and under or a po positive or negative or plus or yeah. minus, right? The tolerances. Okay, so that, this is where the chart, the rolling tolerances, comes in. So in this case, we're considered what we're doing is for the depth A, which means that instead of being eight, 18 and one quarter inches, the beam is allowed to come out from the mill a little bit bigger and a little bit smaller, but it has to stay within these tolerances. So <clears throat> that's dependent on the size of the beam. So if you have a W10 by 40, uh, then what you would use is the 12 inches and under row that comes across in here. Is everyone looking at the same chart that I'm talking about? Yes. Okay, good. So in our case, it's over 12 inches because it's a W18. And when they talk about the nominal size, that's what they're talking about. By, by the way, when you have a W18 by 60, what does the 60 represent? How long the beam is? Oh. oh, Jeanette? That's the part I was confused on. But is it the weight in pounds? It is the weight in pounds per linear foot. Okay. Okay. So if you have an, a W18 by 60, and then you have a W18 by 260, that same beam, even though it's only roughly 18 inches deep, weighs 200 more pounds per linear foot. That's a lot. And there are some instances where you are going to need that much more steel packed into that linear foot. What it really means is that <clears throat> the T values, the width and the thicknesses of the webs and the flanges is much thicker. It has a lot more steel in it, which means it can usually support a lot more weight or a lot more forces or loads that are on it. So in our case, we've got a W18 by 60, and we're gonna go and look at this row right here on the rolling intolerances charts where it says over 12 inches. So the positive value for that is going to be plus one eighth, and the negative value is going to be minus one eighth. <clears throat> now, does it ask for the width of the flange also, or just the depth? Well, B, it's, B is the width. And they're asking for that in the chart, in, in your problem, in your assignment? Yeah. Okay, so then you have one quarter inch and three sixteenths inch. And then what is the last thing they asked for? Uh, C, which I'm pretty sure is the length. It is the length of the beam? C, yeah. I'm pretty sure that's what that is. Hold on. Did they ask for a value then also? Oh, or... limits upper and lower. All right. So what is the upper limit 
but it's asking, is it asking for the width or is it asking for both? The depth and the width. Both, both. Okay, let me go to the chart one second. Okay. Um, all right, so it, so it has the three rows. Can you guys see the uh, chart right now? Yeah. With the solutions? Mm -hmm. All right, so there we go. So for A, which is gonna be our depth, all we gotta do is find a common denominator for these, which is gonna be eighth of an inch. So you got 18 and one quarter, which is the same as 18 and two eighths. And for the upper limit, it becomes three eighths. And for the lower limit, 18 and one eighth. So if it comes out of the mill, in other words, if it gets uh, manufactured and it comes out 18 and 3 eighths, it's still good to go. It's still going to fit out in the field. And if it's uh, 18 and 1 eighth, it's still okay. If it comes out at 18 and 0, it's too, it's too small. If it comes out at 18 and 1 half, it's too big. So they would have to be returned or they would have to be uh, modified or something would have to be done to be able to use those beams. All right. Same thing applies to the B. You're going to look for the upper and lower limits on that. And then let's look at the last one that we were talking about, which was C, which is the length. Now they wanted this one to be 60 foot, eight inches for the, for the depth. So let's go back to our charts right here. And for that, we're going to look at our cutting tolerances, which is right below that. So we've got the W shapes, the nominal depth. So you have one row for beams under, and you have another row for beams that are over 24 inches in depth. And then you have five columns for the length of the beam at that point. So Gabrielle, do me a favor. Tell me which row do we use? Which one of these two rows? Beams 24 in or beams over 24? On the assignment or on like the actual PDF? <laughs> well, what's the size of the beam that we're trying to find out? <clears throat> it's a W18 by 60, right? Yes. <clears throat> All right, so what's the depth of the beam? 18, correct? Yes. Now it's 18 and change, but it's 18 inches. So which row, it obviously falls under the top row, which is beams 24 inches and under. All right, so we're going to be using these values going across here. And now all we have to do is to find out which one of the columns it applies to. Now, <clears throat> I'm sorry, yeah, which one of these columns it applies to. Now the beam, it gives you the existing length that they want for the field at 60 foot, eight inches. So we're not gonna use the first one, second one, or the third one. The fourth column right here, over 50 to 65. So our 60 foot, eight inches falls right in between those two columns. Now notice how big the tolerances are for the length as opposed to, um, you know, the actual size of the beam. Um, remember, when they build a steel building, the biggest thing that you have, you can't really get really tight fits because remember, they're going to be flying these uh, beams with cranes and trying to place them in. Could you imagine the amount of difficulty that they would have if they were trying to place these with let's say one quarter tolerance in terms of the length and trying to fit them in between uh, columns and so on it'd be almost impossible especially in real in real life circumstances and uh, environments with wind and um, a number of different things that may um, affect the ability of the workers to be able to put this in so these tolerances tend to be a little bit bigger um, than what we were just looking at in our um, rolling tolerances up above. So um, let's take a look at what we're talking about. Beams 24 inches under. The column we're using is over 50 to 65. So Shanette, what's going to be the length of the beam that's allowed there? The over. The 
size of it. Proceed. Mm-hmm. Well, it says 60 by eight, 60 foot eight. Okay, but what is, that is the length that they, that's the design length. Mm -hmm. But what is the maximum, the over tolerance that we can use for that? Oh, 60 foot eight and three quarters. Correct. And if it's undersized, what size can it be? 60 foot seven and five-eighths of an inch. All right, perfect. All right, everyone got that? Lorenzo? Yep. Gabrielle? Yes. All right, so let's go back real quick and let's go to the um, solutions right into here. And there's your solutions, obviously, for um, the first beam that we did. And you just have to repeat these for all of the, let's say the first three that you're doing, the W18 by 60, the C channel 10 by 20, and the S shape 20 by 95. And just fill in the values there as you have them. Now they're slightly different on this chart than what you're, than what you're looking at in the solutions manual. Either one of those is gonna be correct. I, I always find errors in the solutions for these uh, book problems that they have, so don't, don't worry about that as long as you understand the process and what we're doing here uh, to be able to um, determine what the upper and lower limits are for these tolerances. Any questions on that? Nope. No. All right. The other one in that first half, let me go back to that. Hold on one second. If you take a look at the last one where it shows two joined W shapes. The metric one? No, it's a W24 by 94. And a W, it's joining two W24 by 94s. You see that? Oops. Every time I do this, hold on. All right. Am I still on it? All right, guys, I'm back. I lost my connection. Are you guys okay? Yeah. I lost my connection. I apologize about that. Okay. Someone is chatting. Okay. All right. All right. Let's go back to um, sharing my screen. Let's see if I can do this a little bit better this time. That's assignment two solution. There's assignment one solutions. Let's try that. All right. You guys are looking at this right now at the solutions. Yeah. Well, these, this is my assignment. Well, we're looking at your assignment. Okay, let me take a look at that. Okay, there we go. All right. So tell us what you did here, um, Lorenzo, to get values similar to this. For which one? For the, the joined W shapes. If you, uh, go, if you go from left to right, you go one, two, three, and four. It's W24 by 94 joining a W24 by 94. I took the tolerances for both mm -hmm. of the uh, beams. Okay. And then when I went to the limits for the final upper limit in the C row, I added the ones from A and B. The same with the lower to find like the total limits of both joined. Okay, and then there were probably some errors in the solution. I think there was a couple of errors in this solution. Obviously, one is not um, six foot, zero and seven eighths inches. So that, you know, is going to be incorrect right there, correct? Yeah. And so is the B value is not correct. I just forgot to type in some values. So that should have been a 30, 
something. How did they get a 25 foot six and three eighths upper limit for that? Uh, I think we're looking still in canvas. You are? Okay, hold on. How about now? Nope, still in canvas. All right, I might have to do a new share. Let's try that. Oh, that is canvas, you're correct. How about now? Now it works. Okay. So how did they come up with 25 foot six and three eighths? Because if you add the two upper limits, the one for A and the one for B, it should be more than that, correct? Well, that's just the limits for the first one. Okay. For A. All right. So what is the answer then that we get for this, this one down in here where you add the two? Oh, shoot. Because they're not asking for the limits on the depth of the beam. They're asking for... All right, so this is an error, correct? Yeah. <clears throat> all right, so what you all you really needed to do was to add the two to be able to get the upper limit down in here. So this upper limit right here should be 34 foot, six and one half inches, correct? Yeah. Okay, so that the answer here should be what? 60 feet. Both of those added together. Correct. It's as simple as that. And then here we just have to subtract, be able to subtract fractions. So we know that by getting, we're, we're just going to add these two because we've already gotten our lower limits in here and we just need to add these two to get our lower limit value in here. Everyone understand what we did here? You do the same exact thing that you did previously. And, and it's in the reading also. They give you a good example of how this works out. So you have your upper limit and your lower limit for each one of the beams individually. And then what you have is you have them come out once joined together. All you do is add these two values. These are errors right in here, obviously. It's not six feet. That's impossible. Just like it's not three feet up in here. That's going to be 34 foot six and whatever the upper limit addition is to it right here. And then you just add them together. All right, guys? Okay. All right, let's take a look at, at the bottom right in here. And this is where um, you may have to do some slight convergence, um, you know, converting um, some of the values to metric values onto there, onto, onto the chart right here. So the first one is they have a W460 by 89. Let me see if I can go back to the book. Are you guys able to see the book now? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Let me go back to the book. Hold on. All right. So we for that, we got to go back here, correct? We're looking at the uh, solutions. What are we looking? At the solutions. Okay. How about now? Still a Oh, no. Now it's a chapter. All right. So what's the size of that, that W beam in metric that we're looking for? I lost my connection again. I cannot believe that. Let me try Frontier. Yeah, W610 by 140. Is that the one? Was it the first one? Oh, no, the first, wait. The first one that's metric. W460 by 89, oh, yeah, right? That one. All right. So let's take a look at the chart. 460 by 89. And we've got a depth of 463. So 
for the size and the width of 192. So is that what you used, Lorenzo? Yep. Okay. 463 and 192. All right. Now you went ahead and just did actually what you, um, you checked in your tolerances and you had to actually do some conversions in here. So you had to know what your rolling tolerances was for that metric size. So you actually just needed to convert, correct? Yeah. So 460, um, was it over or under 12 inches? If you convert, uh, I can't remember, but my tolerances were one eight plus and one eight minus. Okay. And when you look at the depth, that's pretty much the same, anyways. And what about for your widths? Width. Uh, same thing. I got it didn't really matter in this case. Quarter and three sixteenths. Yeah. So you basically do the same thing. I will accept that in fractions if you want to, if you don't want to try to do the conversions for the plot positive and negatives. If you notice in the solutions, they did convert them and they don't always add up to what the actual conversion is of a quarter inch um, to millimeters. We know that 25.4 um, millimeters um, is equivalent to one inch. So, one quarter of an inch would be 25.4 divided by four in millimeters. So it comes out this probably six millimeters or something like that. So am I adding, am I doing 25? Yeah, something like that. All right. And then you would add it to the size of the uh, width of the flange in that case, or for the depth, if it's another number. All right. All right. And that's basically the first one that we're talking about. I'm going to do a new share and I'm going to go back to, um, let me see if I can find the assignments here. All right. Are we back to the assignments? Yeah. All right. Now Lorenzo pretty much finished this first assignment. Now, again, he used, he went ahead and used the tolerance. What happened down here at the bottom left? There wasn't any of those fill uh, boxes, so I just made those text things. Instead. Okay, got it. See? See, you were creative, and you came up with a solution. Okay, good. Um, all right, excellent. On to that. Well, let's go on to the next one. And here it is. Solutions for the second part. I'm going to reduce the size here so we can see all of it in one shot. All right. So what do you think you did wrong here, Lorenzo? What's... My viewports are visible. Mm -hmm. Yes, your viewports My are viewport, visible. Yeah. Plus, did you do this at, um, at the proper scale? Didn't you say we just did it? We should... Could just do it at whatever scale no oh well yeah those are wrong scale then <laughs> all right a couple of other things uh all this text right in here let me see if i can actually do a zoom a zoom i cannot i just have to all right what about your dimensions did that look like what I showed on the video or did we modify this? I think these dimensions are coming out a little bit too big. Did you adjust your height of the dimension text like I did in the video to uh, three thirty no. seconds of an inch? No, I didn't. All right. And uh, you have no arrows, right? Looks like those disappeared. Okay. Yeah. And what about the number? Where is it located? In the right center in, of the line. And it's supposed to be above the line, correct? Mm -hmm. All right. So you got some modifications to, to do. Relook at the video. Now, Shanette and Gabrielle, did you have any issues with these two? No. My only issue was that my AutoCAD wasn't working yesterday. But I'm working okay. On. So it's really a matter of, uh, imagine if you were, you had a summer job coming up and you were working for a structural engineering company or for a steel manufacturing company and they wanted you to do these details, they would hand you 
and probably a detail sketched by an engineer or by one of their project managers. And you would just have to copy it onto here. They're not gonna ask you to design these beams, especially in, a, in an intern position or in a beginning draftsman position. So a lot of this is pretty much what you guys would be doing if you were at a job um, while you were going through college or so on to just transfer information. So it's a matter of almost uh, direct, you know, um, copying from what they're gonna give you. Now, as I mentioned right from the beginning, these engineers are, and architects too, unfortunately, are somewhat like doctors in terms of when they write a prescription, it's hard to understand what they've sketched, um, but you have to do the best um, possible to try to interpret it. Here you have a clean cut solution, which is already typed in. It uses CAD in the, in the solutions that it had for it, so it should, it should be pretty straightforward. The other thing, Lorenzo, that I noticed on these is the text thickness here. I don't think was intended to be the same as the detail connection. I think I actually did those in the object layer, so okay. it made them thick. Like so you have, to, you have to modify. All this is important. Remember, if you're working for someone and you're changing what their standard is, they're going to get a little upset. All right? So you need to maintain what I showed in the layering that I showed in the demonstration. All right. Okay. So the scale of this is a little bit off. So you need to follow the demonstration on that. This I think may be correct, but the dimension style is not clean in terms of what we're looking for. Didn't, didn't get modified. So this is your first one. Let's go ahead and let's go to the second one. All right, what's missing from here, Lorenzo? Um, what about the diagram? There's no diagram oh yeah. that shows where the beams are, right? Mm -hmm. I need that diagram drawn just like you did in the first one might be a little bit more complex and you may need a little bit more room to try to fit it in okay so got it see modify the scale accordingly so that it can fit in here all righty and again your yeah. your new viewports are not in depth points everything else looks pretty good here all right here we have another one right in here. Now your question, Gabrielle, was very good regarding the 20 feet in here, okay? In structural drawing, just like we do not have to draw these little corners here when we cut a section through the beam or indicate this, you're allowed to fudge this distance across in here. If not, imagine if you had a 40 foot beam you would never be able to detail it because in order for it to fit on a sheet, it would be too small, the scale would be too small. So they've actually foreshortened this. Um, the scale that you want is going to be the vertical scale right in here, which is one and one half inch is equal to a foot, is what they were looking for in here, which allows you to draw this. Let's go to the next one. I don't know, did this one have a, a, um, a framing plan also, Lorenzo? Not sure, it probably did. Let me check. I can, I can check on our, um, on our solutions. I don't know if this one has, there we go. Okay, so here's the one. Can you guys see the, um, can you guys see the solution for the beam? No, it's still in canvas. Still is in canvas. But that one did have a framing plan. All right. So I think most of them had a framing yeah. plan. Yeah. Except the last one. But all of them did. Correct. The last one had the two beams, so they did not fit. Okay. And that's it. Let me show you one that did show them all onto there. Let me go back to. Let me show 
Johannes. All right, so here's Johannes. This looks a little bit better in terms of the scale. Now she has some of the same issues that you had, Lorenzo. She has her text. I'm not sure if she modified this to the right size, but uh, that annotation size should be coming out the same as any of this text that's coming out in here. And notice she has her diagram right here, her framing diagram. She has it on this one. I don't know why she's cut this beam here. I think they did it to be able to get dimensions in it. And she should have just continued it if she has no dimensions. She may be missing some dimensions on here. Oh, there's Johanna. She must have known we were using her drawings. Let me see if I can allow her in. Hold on one second, guys. <laughs> Okay, Johanna, you joined us. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> All right. Perfect timing. We were just starting to show your work. Okay. Johanna, your drawings look very good. There's a couple things that just need to be modified. Um, okay. Right. For example, if you take a look at the demonstration video, this was some modifications right in here that we had. Um, we needed to bring this dimension above the line. Oh, okay. okay. And let's see. That's your first one. Let's look at the second one. All right, she's got her chart, or she's got her framing plan right in here, which is good. You may want to organize this a little bit better. You did this very good. You. In other words, you hatched in the areas just like it shows in the reading and it shows in the solutions. Let's go to the third one. So for the first one, I just have to move my dimension up. That's about it. Well, or no. Yeah, you could use a little modification in line weights. I'm not sure I can't zoom in enough on this to see if you did any modifications for any of that. Just make sure all the information is pretty much like it was okay. on, the, on the solutions, okay? Mm -hmm. Okay, then we got the second one. And I'm gonna go ahead and post, by the way, you missed the first half, I think. Um, oh, okay. Which had to do with the charts. So coordinate with Gabrielle or Jeanette or uh, Lorenzo. And also look at the video I'm gonna post probably in about a half an hour. I also extended the deadline. So don't worry about that. Oh, okay, great, thank you. All right, there we go, the third one. Got our charts. Okay, that looks good. Just make sure you have all the information that's the same. Just check your dimensions to match, okay? In terms of the locations and the settings for the dimensions, the size of the text, etc. There's the next one. And there we go. It was a good job, Jana. Let's just make some, some tweak it and resubmit it, okay? And then of course, right. this one is the one that you're gonna look at the video or coordinate with, with Gabrielle or with right. Jeanette, okay? And Lorenzo. All right, guys? All right. All right. Thank you. All right, okay. That was pretty good timing. It's almost 11 o'clock. It's time for me to have my breakfast <laughs> or lunch. Um, if you guys have any questions, again, I'm available. So don't hesitate to email me or contact me one way or the other at any time. All right. I may not answer right away, but I'll try to get to your, um, your questions as quickly as possible. And Lorenzo, I'll be giving you a call um, a little bit later today. Okay. All right. All right, guys. Um, let me stop the share. Oh, yes, sir. I'm sorry. Um, I sent you an email like a couple of days ago. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you saw it though. Yes, it I did. I'm trying to, I'm trying to come up with some solutions for what you're, what you're asking in terms of what the best laptop may be. Um, okay. there's going to be a trade off there between weight 
and power. Oh. Okay, because you don't want to be lugging around. For example, my computer weighs over 10 pounds. Okay. Oh. So you don't want to be doing that. You want a nice, compact one that has enough screen area for you to be able to do what you want. So, yeah. Lorenzo, you may have some solutions to that. I'm going to ask Fidel what he got. Um, do you have a specific price range, uh, Johanna? No, not really. I just want to see, like, like I just want a couple just to know and then kind of select which one I think would be best for me. Okay. What I may do, and I, we haven't done this yet, and I haven't had much experience with it. In Canvas, there's a discussion area. I may create uh -huh. a discussion topic where people can come in and put uh, information there. Oh, okay. If not, I'll also do a little bit of research. So, Lorenzo, Are you guys talking about like, um, laptops or something? Yeah, we're talking about a laptop for school. Oh, you want to buy one? Mm -hmm. Yeah, for school. What's your uh, budget? I currently don't have one. I just I'm just trying to see like which ones are the best, just to it's, like get an idea and yeah. maybe buy one of them. Okay. Okay. So so if he comes up with something that's eight thousand dollars, that's okay. <laughs> a supercomputer as long as you can drive it to school so. yeah i just yeah yeah as long as it can drive me to school yeah. okay all right guys you have a you have a great day and stay in touch okay i'm all gonna right, put on um, one more assignment for structural um which has to do with um with some concrete um detailing again it's just straight line work so it should be pretty easy all right all right. All right, guys. Take care. Bye-bye. You too. Bye. -bye. You too. Bye.